Okay, we're bringing you in now. Sir, here's the confirmation from the owners. SS Carlino Rios expected New Orleans this day 1000 local, coming from Brazil, Central America. Quartermaster were at the bow because from the bow to the bridge is more than an eighth of a mile. They were all the way across on the wrong side of the channel. Something happened. Something strange. The last thing I could make out from the mate was a get away, he said. Get away. From what? Don't know. Don't think I want to know. Give the men shore leave, Captain. No, feed them. Then I want every available hand topside and lookout. We've still got two men out there. Hardy Grau and no Hardy Grau. Julie, you put that away and get yourself over to the church. My mom's scared. Of course you are, baby. It's only natural got a pretty voice. All you got to do is practice. Now go on. And mind that dress. Yes, Mama. Mardi Gras? That coroner is gonna do an autopsy. We're gonna have Zeth's blood analyzed to find out what kind of poison killed him. Then I'm coming back here and take every store in this Delta apart till I find out who bought that poison. I'm gonna feed them some of it. close to the bank. Yes, I see it. Rig out the launch.
tell you this again. Would you take this thing off my desk? Drop it, sir. This man wants us to do an autopsy on a dog. It's not a dog, it's my dog. And? And what? And what makes you think we should do this for you when we don't do it for the man on the street? Because you're the sheriff? Because he was poisoned, that's why. Well, a lot of dogs get poisoned, Sheriff. Well, look, I didn't mean to bully you, but I'd sure appreciate it if, if you could help me. Just how old are you, anyway? 31. Isn't that kind of young to be the coroner? I'm not the coroner. I'm the assistant M.E. I'm stuck here on this terrific holiday. Your friendly neighborhood just made the great doctor. Are you sure you know what you're doing, Doc? Well, very few of my patients ever complain. Can you see the transport of this body yourself? We'll do our best. If there's any problem, we'll call you. All right, fair enough. We'll alert the morgue and let them know you're on your way. In your opinion, uh, would you say this man died from drowning? No. His face and hands are covered with some kind of rash or sores. All right, thank you for your cooperation. Out. Morgue line's busy, sir. Keep trying. Chief, hold the crew, Chief. Animals approximately five years old. Six. Correction, six years old. External evidence indicates toxic paralysis. Eyes and head very puffed, even disfigured. Close examination reveals Funny. What? Where you live, do you have any prickly plants and nettles? Yeah. Got some bushes around there with thorns on them. They grow wild. My wife knows the name of them. I, I could call her. Well, wait a minute, we'll see what we've got. Well, you can forget about calling your wife. It's a stinger. Insect. You mean some kind of bugs killed Seth? <clears throat> you really want to watch this? What time is it? And I'll bet you've got the wrong number. It's Jeff. Oh, this better be good. Well, I didn't want to call you anymore. You didn't want me to. No. You obviously have no idea how much I don't want to hear your voice. I think I get the picture. So? Jenny, I'm on duty. All I need from you is a technical opinion. Oh, I'm glad you're disturbing my sleep for the use of my brain instead of my... Jenny. Could bees kill a dog? What? Could bees kill a dog? Well, they could, but they wouldn't. Well, they did. Just bees? Just bees. What, did the dog get into the hive and start eating the honey? No. There was no hive near where they found it. So what makes you so sure it was bees? Because the dog's stomach was filled with them. Do you have a specimen of these bees that killed the dog? Dozens. 
I'll be in my laboratory in an hour. Same one? Yeah. Not everything's changed. interrupt you again but you're the only one here it's all so irregular i don't know what gets into people you have to have paperwork when you go to the mall there's a death certificate then there's a police clearance and then the police is this yours not anymore you have to fill out some papers anything you say doctor as long as we don't have to keep it you know how it happened nobody knows for sure Sure. most frightening thing I ever heard. But. But? What but? Look, you guys are right. These bees could be a disaster. But what do you want from the police department? Well, the coroner's office reports to you, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I'm reporting. Lieutenant? Yeah. It's Brown again. Tell him no. Look, report to somebody else. Go over my head. Deputy Mayor Pellegrino will be here this afternoon. Oh, this afternoon? Yeah. Well, the bees have already killed possibly 13 people. Now, don't you think they should be protected, the people? And warm, don't you think? Oh, come on, this is Mardi Gras. Look, I'd like to help, but I can't take the risk. Yeah. I can't take the responsibility of panicking everybody over something I can't do anything about. As soon as Mardi Gras is over, I'll give you all the help I can. Right now, I'd get some proof if I were you. Documented proof. You're going to need more than two glass jars full of bees and some hearsay. No offense, McHugh, but I mean, you don't know for sure those bees are out there killing people, do you? Just how many dead people would you like for proof? Listen, McHugh. How many bees are there? We don't know. Where are they? We don't know that either. You see? Look, I believe you. But I got no men to spare. Document it. And then we'll take it from there. Lieutenant? Yeah. Brown and Seth. Tell him no. N-O, no is no. Well, back to square one. Yeah. What about you? Who, me? Yeah, what are you gonna do, forget about it? You gonna dive into the magic of Mardi Gras? On the horns and hats, booze, ladies. Don't tempt me. I don't know. Are you? Who? I'm going down two lane. Get these analyzed. Well, you can go out to Paris and look for those bees. I like your first idea better. Looking for those bees on our own is crazy. Now, why should we? Well, because... <clears throat> We's about all we got. You in? Yeah, I'm in. That's good. What do you see? Standard Italian specimen. And your bee. Similar in all major aspects. Antennae, 12 major segments. Mandible normal. Proboscis, a little mangled, but looks the same. Stinger missing. Try this one.
Same sort of mangling, missing stinger. What makes you think there's something special about this one? Well, this one came from the stomach of a man. Jeff, you said a dog. That was the other one. The man was stung hundreds of times, maybe a thousand. There was enough toxin in him to kill an elephant. Jeff, there are bees that can kill an elephant. But not bees like that in North America. Yeah, well, the victim was a made off afraid of a collider with a banana boat. There's 11 crew still missing from a banana boat and one from the freighter. Banana boat from where? Brazil. Right. We call The National Bee Stock Center. We knew it had to happen. What had to happen? The African. <laughs> Makes you nervous, does it? Well, you might say that. Yeah, most people feel that way about bees. It's been that way for a million years. Ever since the first man stuck his finger into a hive to get some honey, got himself stung for his troubles. Honey flow good today, Bill? Fine. That's a pity, really. People don't realize bees are the best friends they've got. You know, we send queen bees from here to every part of the country, repopulate the hives with them. Then their offspring go about the business of pollination. Of course, without pollination. Yeah, no crops, no food, I get that. After you, sir. You know, I've heard a lot about you, Mr. Durant, from Jeannie. Oh? You don't seem to me to be a grade-A dyed-in-the-wool Rufus. son of... Rufus. Rufus never had any doubt they would arrive. The question was when. We uh, have a videotape here which I've narrated in order to give the uninitiated some idea of what we're up against. Well, then you are prepared. I wouldn't say that, just forewarned. We had, however, hoped for a larger audience. Caution. The contents of this film are extremely sensitive. This material is not to be shown to the public without the written authorization of the National Bee Center. In 1956, scores of Brazilians were killed when they were attacked by swarms of the so-called Africanized bee. Dr. Jorge Miller, South America's leading expert on insect genetics, explained the bee's presence in the Western Hemisphere. The African bee was imported to South America only as an experiment. The attempt was to increase honey production by controlled breeding of the more aggressive African bees with a gentler Italian strain. Through an accident, the experimental colony was released and began uncontrolled crossbreeding with the South American bees. The African genes are very strong. The bees that are produced by the mating are extremely aggressive. I had no idea they would become as savage as they did. September the 12th, 1965, a swarm of killer bees invaded Rio de Janeiro. The final toll was 82 killed. A country farmer was assaulted so savagely that 80 bees were found in his stomach. A funeral party in Recife was assailed 300 people were injured, 18 died. An experiment was established to monitor African bee behavior. Apparently, bees detest the colors black and red. The fury of the attack was recorded by a microphone held inside a black bag. Normal protective clothing did not ensure the safety of the cameraman and his assistants. More than 500 stings a minute savaged the bag in which the microphone was placed. The difference between the Italian and African bees is remarkable. Most honeybees attack only to ward off invaders. The Africanized bees attack when annoyed by color or sound. Once an invader has left, Italian honeybees will not continue to swarm in anger. African strain will pursue a quarry for as much as 24 hours. Well, with that film and the bee specimens, at least we won't have any trouble convincing the government. 
I'm afraid it's not that simple. There's no exterior way of telling the Italian from the African. We have to use a computer. Look, this is going to take at least an hour. Why don't you go into town and get some lunch? Hmm? Thing is, we don't want to alarm anybody. Then just what the heck are we doing? We're only going to suggest that people not take chances. There's a difference? We've got to know where those bees are. Now, you tell them if they see anything to give us a call, and we'll be there right away. And do what? You think I know? Oh, I'll just have the uh, mixed plate glass of wine and coffee later. Where's the swarm now? Well, as far as we can figure, about 20 miles southeast. Very close. Well, it's like the devil planet, huh? And the bee center is the perfect ready-made breeding ground. Flat swarm must be destroyed to the last bee. I'll contact Jorge Muller. He claims to have a method by which he can neutralize the Africans. Of course, it'll be no use unless your sheriff, what's his name? Q. Yeah, unless he can locate the swarm. But I think he will. And I think when more people know about it. No, no, you, you, you must promise not to do that. We can't panic people. We're in something of a dilemma. If we frighten people, they're going to start killing bees indiscriminately, especially the farmer. He'll be worried that his animals, his family will be in danger. They'll burn the hives. There'll be less and less bees. Less and less food. Suicide. So what do we do? I don't know. If that swarm enters New Orleans, I mean, the city noise alone will set them on a rampage. They will kill every living thing in sight. Your city morgue won't be big enough to cope with the results. These Africans are different, not only chemically, but psychologically. They don't merely want to sting. They want to kill. You looking for bees? Yes, ma'am. Well, you sure come to the right place, Sheriff. I got a whole bunch in the backyard. They've been driving me crazy all day. You mind if I take a look? No, you, you go right ahead. No, I mean from inside, the back door. Oh, I don't know. The, the place is a mess. I've yet to do the dishes. This could be an emergency, Miss Wright. Well, if you promise not to look close. Oh, thank you. They've been out there for hours. Could I use your phone, ma'am? Of course. Is that Jimmy? Yeah. Jimmy, go back. That's you, Sheriff? It is. Be careful of these bees. Don't come this way. Go back. See, Sheriff, you don't have to worry about these bees. You don't bother them, they don't bother you. Thank you, Miss Bright. Them's not the bees you're looking for. No, ma'am. I guess they're just bees. And you can thank the Lord for that.
Pellegrino. Who are you? I'm Jeff Duran. I'm assistant medical examiner with the coroner's office. We have an emergency. Today? What difference does today make? Well, what kind of an emergency? It's about a swarm of killer bees. Killer bees? Take that stairway. I'm in 301. From the looks of the clothing and the general description, it could be that captain from the Carlina Rios. Well, let's find out. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Well, I'm just terribly sorry to disturb you at home. Oh, yes, sir. I can expedite it. All of it. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Goodbye. So, so we go with a clear procedure. It just so happens that we'd already set up for this particular situation anyway. You mean someone in the government actually got a jump on this? Yes, ma'am. Decisive action is very important in cases like this. Now, what I'll do is I'll get to working with the Department of Agriculture just as soon as I get all the facts straight and, of course, verify the source. Now, uh... Your name again is, uh... Jeanette Devereaux. I'm a graduate fellow in entomology at Tulane. And you, sir? Jeff Duran. I'm a research pathologist. I'm a fill-in on, on weekends and holidays. Uh, you, you're the young man that turned in a report, but you're not actually a, a city coroner, are you? No, sir. Well, that could be a little problem there. Of course, I think I can take care of it. I'll just... I'll just tell X the appropriate authorities. Just as soon as I can, then we can get the proper authorization. Now, that hold it. We... Uh, hold, hold it just a second. What are you talking about, tell X and proper authority? Well, you don't seem to understand. You see, I just can't take this on myself. To... What do you mean, can? I think you better. Now, wait a minute. Do you know who you're talking to? Yeah. I'm talking to a damn fool civil servant whose idea of action is to sit on his what damn... What do you want me to do, run up and down a levee with a butterfly net in my hand? Let me tell you something, mister. Now, you want action? You go through the proper channels or you won't get it at all. church. Six hours now. I'm worried sick. Something's happened. I know something's happened. 
Come on, Miss Comfort, get in. You know something's happened. No, ma'am, I didn't say that. Just come on and get in. All right. what we need. Oh, now, wait a minute. We promised Rufus. I know we promised Rufus. You know what Rufus said about them bees? We get yeah, to tell well, what they do? Should give him a call. Well, well you, know, you talk to him. You do what you want. Things. I want to talk to him. Do what you want. Dr. Rufus Cowder, please. Dr. Cowder. Rufus, it's Janie. Nobody in the city government will do anything fast enough. Jeff thinks if we're going to get any kind of results at all, we, we ought to make some sort of a public announcement. Janie, you mustn't do that. You promised me. But, but I'm trying to tell you that Jeff is convinced that if we're going to get any kind of results at all, we've got to give the story to the television people. I'm beginning to think he's right. Please, I've spoken to Jorge Muller. Richie, can you swing the camera down and set me up for an interview spot? Great. And tell the desk to monitor this. They may be interested in it. Yep. Yep, I'll meet Mueller. Flight 8, Air Brazil. Do you really think he's got an answer? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Ready? Here we go. This is Mary Gordon, sidelight on New Orleans. With me today is Dr. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, could you give me Durand, a Durand, Jeffrey Durand, Dr. Dr. Jeffrey yes, Durand. Got it. Okay, here we go. This is Mary Gordon. Rufus, I can't hear you. Hey. today is the assistant medical examiner for the city of New Orleans, Dr. Jeffrey Durand. <laughs> Dr. Durand has come up with a rather startling story. It concerns the approach to New Orleans of a small <laughs> did, did this man introduce himself as a doctor? I he am often a doctor. does that. I, I suppose he's told you a lot about bees, too. There are bees. I, I really think you'd do better not to listen to what he says. Jeff, Jeff please. Wait. Dr. Mueller is coming in town from Brazil tonight with a solution. Are you sure? No. Cut it off. If those bees show up, head for the burner and get behind it. Yes, sir. Can you light up that fast every time? Yes, sir. Well, that's fine. Now, we're going to form a line and move through this field. And nobody do any talking unless you got something to report. And don't panic at the sight of the first ladybug. And if we find... Whatever you find, don't touch anything until I get there. Is that plain? Okay. All right, let's go. So, Dr. Frankenstein is coming up from Rio to undo what he's already done. Maybe. I don't know, it's all so strange. I feel like we're going nowhere. I'll tell you how I feel. I feel in the Yeah, well, me too. Oh, you're the most apt person I know. 
Yeah, that's a hell of a thing to say. It wasn't meant as an insult. Well, you should make it seem like one. Oh, we fighting again? How can we be fighting? We're not even talking. Well, what are we doing, Janet? What are we doing? Jeanette. Jeanette. him anywhere. Just the tractor down by the bayou. Why, Albert wouldn't ever... I'll get over there and take a look, ma'am. Is it true what we hear about the bees? Sheriff? Sheriff? Pretty soon we're gonna run out of jobs. Tell me about it. Well, at least you can call that Coast Guard lieutenant and tell him his men can have liberty. It's no rare disease. Just your standard death by bee sting. Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. Well, it's a seven-year-old girl that's on her way in. They headed out looking for another one. When I took this job, I never thought there was going to be overtime. How do you ever get into this line of work, huh? Uh, lucky, I guess. We got his footprints here heading into the river. We can work from here down. The tide's going that way. Did you see the bees that pull out that air cleaner in the tractor? I did. You got any idea what you're going to do if they come after us? I do. I am going in that water. And I ain't coming up till I get to Pensacola.
for the mouth. Some swarms of Africans have such venom that I believe a man can be killed by as few as three stings. As you know, this suit was made specially to my own design. It's quite fantastic. A normal netting cloth unit is pitifully inadequate. They sting right through. Well, now, uh, my intention is quite simple. I shall enter the swarm. Enter? And I shall pick out the queen and replace her with a new queen. The new queen will gather the swarm around her. And when they hive and begin to breed, they'll eventually produce a new generation of hardworking, non-aggressive offspring. Now, wait a minute. I thought you came up here to stamp out this swarm. My dear Miss... Uh, Jeanette Devereaux. If you were to attack the swarm and kill the queen, it would simply disperse. These killer bees being genetically dominant, I believe, Dr. Carter, that just a few refugee bees in this center could mean the Africans would cover America by oh, as early as September. Still there? I told them they'd have to wait. Gentlemen. How's it going? Ah, uh, fair, I guess. We've been hearing things. Rumors, wives' tales. Is there a bunch of killer bees loose in the parish? That's right. Where are they now? Last place was near Casio's. After that, we're just guessing. 
What are your plans? There's a man who's come in from Brazil. He's going to do something with him. We're talking about evacuation. There's some hard decisions got to be made. People have to be taken care of. I doubt if there's... Because if those bees cut loose, everybody in this parish is going to go across that river at the same time. We... We thought that we ought to, you know... Yeah, I know. And I'm willing to give you gentlemen of the council priority. Because when those bees cross that water, and they will cross it, I can't think of anybody I'd rather see standing on the opposite shore. Turn. Yes, sir. Show these gentlemen out the door. And if they don't disperse within five minutes, run them in for loitering. Yes, sir. One of these days, McHugh, you're going to go too far. <laughs> I probably will. But it'll take a better man than you to tell me when that is. Well, I can leave if you want. Now, that's some entrance line. That's why I am being so singularly honored, sir. I'm sorry. I'm scared. Well, why do you think I'm here? I have to go out and see McHugh and get organized for tomorrow about some crazy scheme I don't have the slightest faith in. And you want to hold hands? Something like that. swarm of killer bees to bring you back. It took seeing you again. To credit the bees if you want. No, thank you. I refuse to be grateful to a bunch of bees. Is that actually meant the way it came out? Warm and pleasant? Yes. mad at me and the city council's gonna have my job. Now, what do you want? I just want a cop. Over there. You want a drink? No, thanks. Well, I just sent in another victim. Albert Casio. Good man. That red pen left there? Maybe. Shouldn't be too far off. Don, they'll cross that bayou. They will? Yeah. There's a field planted in flower. It's on Huma Road. If I was a bee, that's where I'd go for breakfast. I'll start there in the morning. Are you trying to think like a bee? Yeah, I guess so. 
Well, that's about 30 miles from B Center. Like you're heading straight for it. You know, it's like I almost knew it was there. Yeah, my pa used to say there's good in every situation for somebody if you looked hard enough for it. I wonder what he'd say about this predicament. Well, maybe it takes this sort of thing to get people thinking about other people. Everyone or everything being in the same boat. Yeah, I know what you mean. Do you? Yeah. You mean there ain't no damn bees gonna get the best of us? I'd like you to meet Dr. Miller. Dr. Miller, this is Jeff Durant. Doc. Yes, hello. Oh. Are we all here? Come a little closer. Uh, you each have radios, and you've been given the sectors you'll patrol, all right? Now, I'd like to urge you to be very careful of any undue noise. The Africans are extremely sensitive to vibration. In the event you are attacked, your vehicles are the safest place. But remember to close all vents instantly. Ms. Devro and I will remain here in readiness for the sighting. I'll expect each of you to report every 15 minutes. Thank you. Nothing here. Sorry, Jeff. This is Deputy Turn checking in. Natchez Road. Nothing here. Fly 10 to 15 miles. We're faced with a circle. It can get only larger and larger. Get in. Well, 
it's not bees. That's for sure. Think we should take a look? Dr. Catter, have you got anything? I uh, just have a uh, dead chicken, Sheriff, with a with a red cap on it. Anything else nearby? Oh, yeah, there's a strange symmetrical design in the grass. Don't touch anything. It's all sacred. It's a veve. Hey, uh, watch, Sheriff. It's voodoo, Dr. Cowder. Uh, anything special we should do? Nothing. Leave it be. We need all the help we can get. Bees are in there. We're out on Peninsula Road. There's a hot dog stand. I know it. Go ahead. The swarm is inside. Dr. Mueller says he wants all cars kept out of the area until he gives the word. He says he wants the roads blocked. Will do. Oh, please wait for the others. No. You'll start the car and take me there. Close all the windows and all the vents. When I give you the signal, turn off the engine and coast as far as you can. I shall walk the rest of the way. You understand? Yes. Under no condition are you to get out of your car. Let's go. towards the door. What are the bees doing? Not much. He told me they don't mind silver. It's the colors black and red that set them off. Marty, come on! Hey, Phil! Sure! What do we do? Sheriff said not to let anybody in there. Now, I know that. You want to go after him? No way. Call the sheriff. You really think we ought to? I'm, 
What can he do anyway? Well, I'll call him. inside now.
If they got to the B-Center, we'd have killers all over the country, maybe all over the world. As long as that swarm is viable, every bee will stay with it, so we've got to keep it together. Well, what are we going to do? Uh, you could freeze them. What? Freeze them. Bees become immobile at 45 degrees Fahrenheit. If you could drive that car somewhere... You could drive it inside of a refrigeration plant or a packing plant. No, that's no good. It can't already be cold. The bees hate the cold. They fly away. Wherever we go, it'll have to cool down after we get there. Also, it'll have to encompass the entire swarm. I mean, some of those bees are 50, 100 yards from the center of the swarm. Great idea, Rufus. I don't think there's anywhere in the world like I'm describing. Hell, there isn't, Doctor. Aren't you a Saints fan? A what? <laughs> what? We'd have to drive the car right through the center of town. I mean, the noise, the motion, the bees would fly away. Hey, you're crazy. You haven't got a prayer. Prayer is exactly what you have got. This is the quietest day of the year in New Orleans. I, I don't understand. It's Ash Wednesday, Doctor. Sheriff, call ahead. Jenny? Yes? How much gas you got? Um, uh, about, about, about a quarter of a tank. Okay. Now don't open up anything. Don't turn your air conditioner on. Just start your engine. Turn up your radio for a minute. We want to get those bees mad at you. miles an hour. We'll escort you. You follow us. Can you do that? Um, I'll try. Where, where are we going? We're going to Superdome. We have an emergency. You're in danger. You have 60 seconds to clear the street. We'll bring you through a swarm of killer bees. We have an emergency. You're in danger. I repeat. Killer bees. Any loud noise can arrive. Absolute quiet is necessary. Turn off all radio, <laughs> all machinery, and get off the street. Close your doors and windows. Wait 10 minutes after we go by before we do the normal activity. It's no joke. Attention. Attention. We have an emergency. You are in danger. You have 60 seconds to clear the street. Come on, get in here. Come on, right now. Get in here. We have an emergency. You are in danger. You have 60 seconds to clear the street. Get off the street. Attention. Attention. We have an emergency. 
You are in danger. You have 60 seconds to clear the street. I repeat, kill a bee. Any loud noise get around. Absolute quiet and necessary. You're going just a bit too fast, Jenny. Slow down. We can't afford to lose one single bee. I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay, Lump, that's fine. Catch it. Catch it. We have an emergency. You are in danger. You have 60 seconds to clear the street. We're almost there. I'm going ahead to get the door open. Hold it, hold it. Wait for 
stragglers. Make sure they're all inside. Okay, left now, Jenny. Okay. Just hold on now. Oh, God. Oh. All right, close the door. Close. Is the cooling system up to full? Yes, sir. Sixty-one degrees. We want it down to 45 degrees. Can you do that? I don't know, Sheriff. Well, that's all we can do. That temperature's going down now. Just hang on. in the reader. I don't know. Never got it this cold before.
Jenny. Jenny. I sure do want to thank you, sir. 